All right, Jeff, good job on the, on the analyze phase. And so welcome back, Six Sigma TV.net, white belt overview. Now we're gonna move into the improve phase overview. So here's a, a little bit of an overview of what this whole phase looks like and some of the tools that we're gonna to use here. So first thing we're gonna do, all the root causes that Jeff generated for us, we're gonna take those and start generating solutions using such techniques as you know, brainstorming, different understanding where the sources of the waste are coming from, et cetera. And we're gonna select solutions. We're gonna understand which is, what are they gonna give us the best benefit for the cost of the solution. And we're gonna go out and try these out using maybe some designer of experiments and stuff like that, which are more advanced tools we'll get into later on. And then we'll go and implement, and then we'll go back and check and see how our process is doing. So what we wanna get out of the improved phase, identify potential solutions to validated root causes. The ones that we came up with in the analyze phase, those root causes that we validated are in fact root causes and prioritize those and we're going to start coming up with solutions for them. And we're going to find the solutions that best address the prioritized root causes as they relate to the CTCs or critical to customer requirements that we came up with back in the define phase. And we're going to test those proposed solutions and we're going to validate those proposed solutions and make sure that they really did in fact bring the improvements that we were, we were forecasting them to make. So what's the deliverable validated solution or solutions? So fixing the vital few. Once again, just like the vital X's, we're gonna go back and look at what are the vital few root causes that have the biggest impact on our process. And we're gonna prioritize those. We can't always fix everything at once. So going back to uh, beginning of the planning, we might be doing some kind of a multi-generational project plan. And so when we go through this first generation, we wanna go and in the spirit of continuous improvement as well, we want to go in and prioritize those root causes and take care of all those issues that are really causing problems within our process. So what are the X's or what are the root causes that are impacting us? And let's go take care of those first. So solution selection steps. Here's just a, a general idea on some, an easy way to go after it. Generate potential solutions. We can go benchmarking, brainstorming, design of experiments, theory of inventive problem solving or trees, which is another topic we'll be bringing to Six Sigma TV.net later on. It's a little more advanced innovation technique. And also one that's not listed up here that I'm gonna chat about a little bit more in a second is um, poke yoke, where we go in and mistake proof the process so that we, or they call it dummy proof in it, so that we can make it so that everybody, it will just happen without errors. And we're gonna go in and refine these potential solutions, determine which ones, maybe we can make some refinements in what we came up with, or take some from one area and, and add it to another, et cetera. Anyway, develop the best solutions that'll help us address these these root causes. Now we're going to select the solution or solutions that are going to help us make the biggest impact on our process improvement efforts. So as I mentioned, you're, you're familiar with the brainstorming. The benchmarking piece is basically how well do we compare to other organizations within our industry and outside our industry. We had one hospital that we worked with that actually went down to Disney World, and I know it's pretty common nowadays. We had a hospital go down to Disney World to understand customers and how, how to better take care of their customers and, and treat, make a better experience for their patients. They were having pretty low patient satisfaction rates and so they figured what better place to go than to Disney World and understand how the happiest place on, in the world makes their customers happy. Brainstorming, standard, several techniques. You probably have all gone through brainstorming. There's um, several different techniques you can go through to come up with solutions. And we have design of experiments where we start testing different things out to see how well does this solution work or what happens if we tweak this area, what, what's the impact over here, et cetera. So mistake proofing, basically it's a method that makes it difficult or impossible pr to produce defective work. Dummy proof it. So what we try to do is make sure that we minimize the amount of human assistance required within a process. They've, uh, I've heard from many different sources that human beings are only capable of about four sigma. So in order to get beyond four sigma, you need to start automating and removing the human factor from the process in order to, to get across that wall and into the five and six sigma world. And the goal is to completely eliminate any defects. So mistake proofing is one potential way to generate potent, uh, solutions. Then once we generated these solutions through our brainstorming, benchmarking, poke yoga, et cetera, we're gonna go test those identified solutions. We wanna make sure which ones, we wanna make sure that they actually will address the root cause or which ones are the best for addressing the root causes that we've identified. So we can do this in several ways. One is go pilot it. We can go try something out out on a floor 
We can go out and change the way things move around, how things are manufactured, or how a loan might be processed, or how we handle patient records, or whatever it is that we're looking at doing. We can go out and pilot that test. Another thing is to do experimental design. Ideally, what we'll do is come up with experimental designs and then pilot those once we've gone out and come up with the best sort of design. And then simulation is one of my favorites, and we'll get into that a lot more later in separate, probably separate courses and modules on process modeling and simulation. But what we can do is take the process models and or the process maps and models that we've developed already in the define, measure, analyze phase and start looking at those and start running different what ifs or scenarios on you know, what if we make this change or improve, improve this process. And what that really does a lot for an organization is it'll help them simulate the de designs we come up, changes before we actually go out and pilot the actual changes. So we can go out and test it, kind of like a flight simulator. We can go out and practice flying in the instruments or flying different terrain, et cetera, before we actually go out and do it, saving us a lot of time, a lot of resources, and a lot of money. So simulation is definitely one area in which we can, we can um, jump into further depth at a later point in time. But it also eliminates a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of disruption within the workplace. So basically, we've gone out, we've tested it, come up with our solutions, prioritize those, and now we need to go out and make sure that these, these, these solutions actually work. We've done our pilot, collected the data, and so now we're gonna go out and test this data, more advanced techniques we'll use by hypothesis testing, and then we're gonna go through and make sure everything's okay and make the actual improvements. From here, I'm gonna pass it back over to Jeff again, and Jeff's gonna go in and take us to the control phase where once we've made our improvements, and, and started developing these gains, Jeff's going to talk a little bit about how in the control phase we can sustain these gains. So Jeff, it's all yours.